I had the greatest job in the world, and that's working with dogs. Best in show winner is the French Bulldog. Winston won the National Dog Show. It was amazing, it was exciting. And to have a dog to be number one dog in this country, you have to have great nutrition. And I always fed Pro Plan, just like us. When we eat well, we feel good. And I just love that food and what it's done all these years to all the dogs I bred and all the dogs I've shown. All Welcome right. to Pure Dog Talk. I am your host, Laura Reeves, and I am super excited. One of our oldest, dearest friends of the show, Sheila Goff, AKC Government Relations is joining us and we're going to get to have a conversation. I've been I've been waiting on the timing for this because the CDC regulations about dog importation have had everybody's heads blowing up and I knew Sheila was working on it. I knew there was stuff going on behind the scenes and so I wanted to wait until we had the most recent information and so here we are today. So, <laughs> welcome Sheila. It is so great to see you. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you, Laura. I love being on your on your show. Um, and I, I did get a chuckle because so much has been changing, just little bits and pieces about this rule that I think this is the most up to date. It is the most up to date as of now, but we might have another update in a few more days. It actually publishes next Monday. Before everything is said and done on August 1st. Oh okay, so let's start at the top. How how in the wild, wondrous blue world did we get where we are today? Right. It is a complex situation. Um, let me start with some context. Um, in, in the United States, we are dog lovers, of course. We have everyone, lots and lots of pets. We love our dogs. And of course, you know, they, they, they live a wonderful life. They pass away and we want to replace them. So we have, when you look at demographics in the United States, there's an 8 million dog replacement rate. So that means look at supply and demand for dogs. Um, there needs to be 8 million dogs, new puppies uh, available every year to simply replace our beloved pets that have passed away. Doesn't even, and that's just holding everything uh, holding everything still. We're, we're really not doing any increases for population increase or anything like that. Okay, that's statistic. Now, we've talked many, many times about the fact that breeders in the U.S. are dealing with an increasingly unfriendly legislative environment. Um, you know, lawmakers see irresponsible owners, some irresponsible breeders, and unfortunately, we all get tarred with that same brush. So the knee jerk reaction um, everywhere from, you know, from federal state to local is, oh, well, we need to regulate breeders more. The problem with so much of what we're seeing, and especially because there is a huge animal rights component in the legislation that we're seeing, is that increasingly it's difficult for responsible breeders to breed the way they want to breed to breed the way they feel is ethical, is appropriate for their particular breeds because we're seeing so much one size fits all legislation. We're seeing laws that are, you know, everything from limit laws, HOA laws that prevent people from having multiple dogs, um, lice, you know, lice, commercial licensing for somebody who has one litter of puppies, et cetera, et cetera. So you can go to our website and see all the, yeah. you know, sort of the incredible variety of legislation that we're fighting on a daily basis. I don't want to go down a rabbit hole because we're talking about CDC and not breeders, but this is a really important piece of the context of how we got to CDC. Right. So with that bottom line of fanciers and even professional breeders aren't able and typically don't want to be producing 8 million dogs a year, what we have is a situation where supply and demand is out of whack. So along come imports. As a result of the U.S. dog market, um, CDC, of all people, and this actually goes back to, to something we asked for a number of years ago, has reported that basically we have one million dogs being imported into the United States every year. The vast majority of those dogs that are being imported are being imported for retail rescue. So these are not the dogs that are coming from that fabulous kennel in the north of England that's going to 
produce your produce your next, you know, fabulous hunting spaniel, or you know the um, the lapund that's that's coming from from Finland. Uh, unfortunately, what we're seeing is huge number of imports of dogs that are unhealthy. They're coming from random sources. They're coming. They're street dogs, um, and they're coming from purpose-bred facilities, from facilities where they're purpose-bred that frankly would make our bad breeders look like country clubs. Um, so it's it's an extremely disturbing situation. With all these dogs being imported into the United States, uh, CDC learned, has been tracking this for a number of years, but even in like 2020, they saw a 50% increase of dogs being imported into the United States with fraudulent paperwork. So it was either fraudulent rabies or health certificates or fraud in terms of the age of the dog. So CDC became aware that there was this huge problem with fraud when it comes to the health of dogs being imported in the United States. And like they say, the proof is in the pudding. We started to see dogs that were imported bringing rabies back into the United States, diseases that we thought were eradicated. So we started seeing- Brucellosis, right? Brucellosis. Remember the canine influenza outbreaks? Mm -hmm. Directly, goes directly from dogs imported from South Asia. Leishmaniasis, uh, rabies, and then, you know, novel new diseases we're not even used to seeing and we can't even identify. It's like, what's going on? W what are these dogs getting? And in a lot of cases, what's happening is dogs are being imported. We don't understand what they're bringing with them. Some, you know, innocent person takes their new pet to uh, someplace out in public. Our dogs are not prepared to, you know, react to these diseases. They don't have the immunity. Next thing you know, we, we have a public health crisis on our hands. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a long background, yep. but as a result, um, AKC working with NAIA, working with a the American Veterinary Medical Association, we realize that, that there really is a public health issue and we need to get at these uh, sick dogs being imported into the United States with contagious diseases. They, they, they don't have the rabies vaccination. They don't have, um, um, but, but they have other contagious diseases as well. And we got involved, we worked with CDC and we've been working with USDA and we've been working with Congress on something called the Healthy Dog Importation Act. Right. And that was our effort to get at this issue because it is truly a very legitimate issue that, that nobody wants these diseases. Well, in AKC, trying to be proactive. Good on yes. you. Good on you. Yes. Good on you. Yep. Now, really you working hard first? to be proactive. <laughs> yeah. At, yeah, and, and, and get at this problem. What that bill did, and still does, because incidentally, that language is in the farm bill this year, right now in the House Farm Bill, and we're really, really happy about that. This required dogs coming in, have a rabies vaccination, a microchip, and be in good health. That legislation allows dogs that have a rabies vaccination to come in at four months, mm -hmm. which is what we currently have. Mm -hmm. um, so CDC, interestingly, decided that they were also going to try to address this problem. They decided to address it rather than through legislation, but through regulation. And they can do that. Remember COVID, CDC has, mm -hmm. has, has, you know, they have a lot of leeway when it comes to public health issues of what they can do. So they basically created an administrative rule. Um, they put out an announcement about it um, back in July of last year. We provided comment on it. Um, I think, unfortunately, our comments, I think our, our you know, our alerts weren't widely seen. Um, they, they sort of looked at our comments and then they put out this new rule early May saying, you cannot bring a dog into the United States unless it's six months of age and has a basically a rabies. And I'm going to generalize here, but for most of for most dogs coming in from another country that is low risk for canine rabies, it still has to have a rabies, you know, it still has to have the rabies and it can't be younger than six months of age. Um, that is a difference from what we did with um, having them come in younger as long as we can prove their health status. So where we we stood until recently, <laughs> until some, some breaking news that we have today is CDC said, okay, as of August 1st, um, any dog coming to the United States from any country must be microchipped. Yeah, 
Okay. Uh, must be in good health. Yep. I agree with that. But must be six months old. Yeah. And basically needs to have immunity from rabies in one of several ways. The most common way is the rabies vaccine. Um, and there's a back door that if you can prove that your dog was in a rabies free country for six months, they also let it in one time. So that's what CDC put out. Now, if you're bringing in a dog from a high risk rabies country, you're going to have to jump through some more hoops. You're potentially, if you don't have a U.S. Um, recognized rabies vaccine on dogs, so you're bringing a dog in from Latin America, um, the Middle East, Africa, uh, places where canine rabies is, is prevalent, um, you may still have to quarantine your dogs. Uh, most of us are going are to be focusing on the low risk countries because that's really where most of us are importing from. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about, we've got breaking news. Okay. So I want to hear uh -huh. about that. But it also, I, my understanding is that you were working with the Canadian Kennel Club because yes. we have exhibitors, right? And we yeah. have breeders and we have people. Yeah. I have people I breed with in, in Montreal and Quebec. Yeah. Right. I, I want to get my puppy at eight weeks. Uh, you know, it, it's amazing how many of us do work. You know, we never really realized how many of us work across the border um, with fanciers. Um, a lot of folks, you know, not only go north to show, but of course, go go north to, to, to breed. Um, AKC, my department has been working with Canadian Kennel Club for a number of years. Um, we work with them particularly on legislation. We've had them down to our legislative conferences. So we've got a good relationship with them. So when this came out, of course, the phone lines are burning up. Um, and of course, the concern for folks in Canada is, whoa, wait a minute. I have got all these puppies. They're going to U.S. homes. What do you mean I can't import them? Uh, or export them to the United States. Uh, so we've been working very, very closely with them. Um, you may have seen we put out a joint letter. Um, we've actually put out a lot of different letters. We've been working with members That's of why Congress. That's here, so we can get the right to the nubbin and talk to people face to face. <laughs> yes, so it's Canada. We've been working with members of Congress. Uh, we've actually been working with the airlines, working with IATA, International Air Transport Association. Um, and we've been working with a wide variety of sportsmen's groups because we also realized that this issue affects more than fanciers. It affects everybody who wants to cross the border with a, with a puppy, um, anything under six months of age. Interesting little factoid. Didn't realize it. Truckers heavily impacted because a lot of folks, you know, in their rig, yeah. they have a pet. They have a pet puppy. And they're like, wait a minute, you're telling me I, I can't bring, you know, Scruffy, my pet, across the border with me? And I cross the border like, you know, three times a week. So, so there's just a, a whole lot going on. Um, we got to learn from, from a lot of mushers, mm -hmm. um, a lot of sled dog races were, were heavily impacted. Of course, a lot of our dog shows heavily impacted. So, um, we have, you know, we have been working with them, um, kind of giving them the update. They've been working with their equivalent of the CDC in Canada. Um, and where we stand now is we've gone through a series of uh, meetings with CDC. We've had um, a number of letters. We've had a congressional outreach. Mm -hmm. Folks who get our AKC GR alerts, and I hope that's everybody, will have seen those alerts that went out. And I said, contact CDC and contact members of Congress. Mm -hmm. The reason is that we have several members of Congress who are very, very in tune with this issue. And they are willing to go to bat, um, mm -hmm. Senator Collins has been has has been great. Senator Murray has been great. They are hearing from their constituents, but they needed to hear more, and so that's why we were saying contact your member of Congress. They're going to try to help us, but they need cover. They need to be able to say, "I'm not just doing this because I feel like it. I'm doing it because my constituents' lives are going to be changed." You know. <laughs> Yeah. This this is important to our constituents. So that's why those legislative alerts went out. It, we, it isn't going to probably be changed through Congress. It's going to be changed directly via CDC, at least at this point. But congressional pressure, especially when it comes from appropriators, folks who hold purse strings, really does make a big impact. So so those are some of some of the entities that we've worked with. 
Drew Panion is revolutionizing medical insurance for pets by providing the best possible experience to our members. And it's not some space age dream, it's happening now. We pay your veterinarian directly while you're checking out and we're the only ones who can, which means you have decisions in seconds and you don't have to wait for reimbursement. So unlike with other providers, you'll keep more money in your pocket. Ask your veterinarian if Trupanion can pay them directly because there's pet insurance and then there's Trupanion. Let's do where we stand right now. What is okay. today? And okay, today sure. is July 23rd. Today, today, <laughs> as, of, as of July 23rd. Um, so yesterday, um, it was very nice. We did actually hear directly uh, at the AKC, we heard directly from the CDC. So thankfully, we have a good enough relationship with them. They call us when they do this. Um, but they did put out an announcement saying that they heard the concerns about um, the rabies certificate. Remember, they had required that you had not only a rabies certificate, but a rabies from a USDA or CK or, or Canadian accredited vet. So it's not just like your, your, your regular vet. It's like, okay, I have to go find basically the same vet I would go to if I'm importing a dog to another country. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that is, that is a, a veterinarian that has a specific requirement. They have dropped that requirement. Um, as of now, um, they have, they're saying that all you need to enter the United States with a dog from Canada or another um, low risk rabies free country. So that's basically Europe, um, Canada, and well says, you know, go check the CDC website, right? To make sure the country that you're, you're bringing the dog in from is, is on that list um, is an import form. It's now available online. It's, you can fill it out online. It takes less than 10 minutes. Um, you're going to have a picture of your dog on it. Um, you know, a little bit of information about you um, and an attestation that this dog has not been outside of a rabies free, low risk country for the last six months. And that is going to enable people to bring dogs under six months of age? No, okay. over six months of age. That's what I Thank you for that wanted, clarifying. Point. Wanted to clarify that because that's so still we haven't gone to six months of the age, but just trans, just trans, transiting. So if you're a sportsman, a handler, mm -hmm. um, any of those folks who have, you know, Vanna dogs, and you're going back and forth across the border, you're okay as long as you have that attestation that the dog has not been out of a rabies-free country for six months. Now be prepared. They can come back to you and ask you for some kind of proof mm -hmm. uh, to violate this. Uh, if you look at the form, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's criminal charges. They're, they're taking this very, very seriously. Um, but, Basically, it's an import form attestation. The dog still needs, and the dog still needs to be microchipped, mm -hmm. and still needs to be six months of age. Okay. So we're it happy about this. Is that. some of the exhibitor situations, but not necessarily the breeder situation. Does not help the breeder situation, and this is where we are still incredibly disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where you know when I said I want to talk to you about this, this is where I was going to go right to the heart of the problem is for a lot of us, it's about the breeder situation. Yeah, yeah we're glad that we could, we could, we, it's a little easier to transit across the border, but they are not changing the six month age requirement. That stands. Um, we have spoken to, to the CDC about trying to get some kind of carve out for known dogs for for dogs that we can demonstrate have been registered since they basically from a registered litter mm -hmm. that they have not left the united states these dogs um you know they have been in our possession mm -hmm. for four months they mm -hmm. they um Two months. they you know they are, are clearly not a risk for canine variant rabies right um I, my next meeting with them is in a week or so. Um, they have expressed a willingness to, I will say this, they've expressed a willingness to work with us. 
I mean, they've, they've been okay to work with. We're really disappointed about the policies they've come up with, but they have been willing to sort of listen. Mm-hmm. And like, we will talk to you. We will talk about some options. Um, so we have pres- we are presenting them with, with some options. Um, and we're, we're hoping that even after August 1st, there is the potential to change this. Um, and it would be probably for a small group of individuals who can demonstrate their dogs are registered. Right. Um, so it's not going to be across the board. You know, like that. Yeah, and, here's the, and here we go back to the whole problem. So all these dogs that were coming into the country fraudulently, the way they were coming in was as this loophole for personally owned dogs. So if it's a personally owned dog, a dog not for transfer, not for resale, not for rescue, rehoming or whatever, USDA already requires those dogs have to be six months of age. So what's happening is their transporters are A, lying about their age, saying, oh, they fit into this loophole, and B, um, getting pet nannies to claim that these were personal dogs, when in fact they were coming in en masse for retail rescue, uh, for rehoming. And so the problem for us is... I'll say blame the irresponsible importers because frankly, they claimed to be us. Mm -hmm. They claimed to be personally owned dogs. And now CDC is saying, we can't tell the difference. So where we need to go with CDC is create a solution where we can say, we can tell, we can tell you the difference. We can show you what we do that those folks would never be able to do. We can show you that this dog has been registered from a registered litter. Uh, you know, we can demonstrate this dog has been to, was has was at the vet as a, you know, one week old, as, okay, example people may not like. This, this dog was at the vet a, at two days old getting its dew claws removed. Yeah. I can prove to you this dog was here in this country. It, it has not gone to Azerbaijan and come back. Yeah. Well, so I think it would seem to me, okay, crazy logic <clears throat> that that um, if you can go to them with breeders of merit and say, hey, these people, in order to be in this program, have to register 100% of their letters. So here's here's a list of names, or maybe that's icky and creepy, and we can't do that. But you know, something something along those lines. Exactly. Is it so that the the thing is that we're now looking at is various ways that we get the problem. We want to help them because it, we we definitely see that essentially the sort of carve out that we had before is being taken advantage of. So now we're like, okay, well, we are the collateral damage, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. It's kind of like having your your credit stolen. But let's work with you to find a way that you feel comfortable and we can demonstrate that these dogs are absolutely zero risk. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're really continuing to focus on let's find a way to allow personally owned dogs to be imported back into the United States at four months of age when they've got their rabies vaccination, Um, because we know that's a crucial time for training. We, we, it's not, you know, it's not that they're breeding stock. It's that this is when we train them. This is when we evaluate them. It's, it's all that stuff. Well, and I guess, I mean, what I'm hearing from you, and I want to make sure that I'm clear about this, there's no way I'm going to be able to go to my friend, uh, Renee Fortier in, in Quebec and pick out my puppy from the litter at eight weeks and drive it across the border with me. Like I did, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're shooting for four we're shooting for four months, um, and and honestly, that's because um, there typically, if many years ago you could do that, about five six years ago, they said actually CDC said they have to be four months or so that was already in place. Now the four months was fully you have to have fully immunized from rabies. So that actually means you get your rabies shot at three months, and then you have to wait like that thirty days until mm-hmm. until it just basically takes. Mm -hmm. So that that, um, added up to four months. So current law is really the four months. There was a workaround with CDC that some people used that said, I'll quarantine this dog at home. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and I can bring him in at at three months. So you're getting a twelve. You know, then you're getting you're getting the twelve weeks. It's 12 got weeks. its rabies, and and people, you know, they're pretty much okay with that. You know, it's no, it's not eight weeks, twelve weeks. Like, okay, so that was the current situation. I don't want to go, and I don't like to go too much into the, yeah. the, the no. details because no, that just confuses. We don't need to go everything. in the weeds, but yeah, I just, yeah, I exactly. just really want people to understand we're right now fighting to get the opportunity to go back to four months. We are, oh, we absolutely, we are, we are pushing for four months because that, that two months we're going to say is critical. Yeah. Um, and, and, and if we can, and we also gives us a, ch- a chance to demonstrate by being out in the media, by being out in the public to say, this is who we are. Mm-hmm. This is how we're different. This is how we care for our dogs. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a, and it's an opportunity for public education too. 100%. I get that you lump us all together. I get they're bad actors out there trying to pretend to be us, but we're going to show you, no, we take great care of our dogs and this, this is how we do it. Right. Um, and I, I don't want to dig in my email while I'm talking to you, but I saw something flash across my email that this thing that you've worked out, um, the, to fill out the paperwork part, the, the online form, is mm-hmm. that, is that just for a short amount of time, like till next year or what is that? Okay. So that's the other great thing that, that they have done or appreciative <coughs> again for people transiting the borders. Um, when the rule came out in May, they said 24 hours, mm-hmm. you fill out that import form. Uh, you fill it online, then you, you get like a little receipt on your phone and, and you show it to Customs and Border Protection or you can print it out or whatever, show it to them. Uh, good for 24 hours. Um, they've changed that. So now and, and one entry, unless it's basically one entry. Now it is, it's good for six months and multiple entries. Oh. So that's not bad. We'll take it. So that's um, for exhibitors, for people going to shows in Canada, you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Come back into the United States. You have to fill out an import form for each of those dogs. But it's going to be, you know, it's the CDC says it's seven minutes on average to fill it out. It's, you go online, you know, it's, you think of it like a dog show entry online. Right, right. <laughs> Probably, you know. Another entry for dogs back in the United States. Right. Um, so, and that's. And you only have to do that once for, and it lasts for six months? For six months. Okay. So that's, that is, that is definitely a big improvement. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's it. So you don't have to have that um, the certified rabies. It's this one import form. And you are going to test under penalty, you know, under criminal penalties that this dog, as you said, you didn't take it to Azerbaijan or, you know, the Middle East or somewhere else. Now, if you are bringing a dog in from some of those countries, you're still going to have a lot of the, the, the standard hoops to jump through. You're going to need, uh, you know, the rabies vaccine. Um, it behooves you to be before you leave the country with a dog. If you're leaving the dog, leaving the country with a dog and plan to come back in a year or eight months or it's you're shipping it back. Look at the look at what you need now mm-hmm. so you can be prepared to get it back in. Um, in an efficient way. Otherwise you could end up with a quarantine situation. And again, unfortunately it's those, those countries have a lot of problems and they are going to, they are trying to protect our health. And a lot of, a lot of the people that I've seen just sort of anecdotally on social media are more of Eastern Europe, you know, specific dogs, specific breeds, you know, racing to beat the deadline. So so we yeah. have to make oh, yeah. sure that we could bring you the most up-to-date information that we had available right before the deadline. So yeah. the good news, the good news is it's an easier form and it lasts longer and you only have to do it once. The bad news is it's still six months. It's still six months. Okay. Yeah. And we'll keep working on that. We will keep fighting. I can't tell you how much time we spent on it, but we've, we are committed to see, to, to, to trying to come up with a solution. And I'm just going to shout out, if you guys have not been to the government relations website, I promise you it is the the shining gold standard of the American Kennel Club's websites. I love, it is very user-friendly, it is very smart, and, you know, 
for all of us. And you and I have said this more times than I can begin to add up on all my fingers and toes. You don't get to just bitch about it. You got to do something. And that means following up on the legislative alerts, writing your um, elected representatives, like make your voice heard and add to the weight of what Sheila and her team is doing. Thank you, Laura. So important. That's that's what I got for y'all. Sheila, thank you. Love you, man. You're the best. Thank you. It's been fun. <laughs> well, I, I understand. As I pull my hair out. <laughs> I understand you're having a day, so I'm going to let you get back to your day. <laughs> All right. Take care. All right. Thanks so yeah. much.